Hi, NA Physics. It's Mr. Neff. Hey, here are my solutions to problem set number two from Linear Momentum. First question is number 10, and it talks about a system containing two particles is known to have zero total momentum. Does it follow that the kinetic energy of the system is zero as well? Well, I, it does not. And I can think of two ways that you could have zero total momentum for a system of particles. You could have two things that are not moving, zero velocity, zero velocity. We would call this the trivial case where the momentum is zero because the velocity is zero. So the sum total of everything here is zero. Now, if that's the case, then of course the kinetic energies will also be zero because we have no velocity. Okay, so that's one way, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. And that's why the answer to this question is no. What you could have is you could have something that was moving to the right and it, maybe it has a positive velocity because it's moving to the right and has a certain mass. And so its momentum is whatever its mass times its velocity is, and we'll say that that's positive. Now you could have another thing, and maybe this thing is actually a different size. Maybe it's gigantic like this, but it's moving really small. Now it's moving to the left, so I'll call that negative velocity. And so its momentum could, will be negative mv like this. Now you could imagine numbers that would work out to be the same size. So let's say the numbers work out that these are the same size but just different directions. And so you could have a total momentum of zero, but now to say that the kinetic energies of zero is just not really true. See, kinetic energy is a scalar versus momentum is a vector. And so that means that when I calculate this kinetic energy, I don't care that it's moving to the right. And when I calculate this other kinetic energy, I don't care that it's moving to the left. And it's still going to give you a positive amount of total kinetic energy. So uh, the, the left, the right part don't make a difference with kinetic energy. So no, the answer is no. It does not follow that you have zero kinetic energy if you have zero momentum of a system. Uh, number 14 talks about two carts moving directly toward one another on an air track. Cart 1, which I drew in red, has a mass of 0.35 kilograms and a speed of 1.2 meters a second. Cart 2 has a mass of 0.61, so I drew it bigger, and it has a speed of 0.85 meters per second, so I drew that arrow smaller, and they're going at each other, so I drew that in the other direction. It asks, what's the total momentum of the system, assuming that cart 1 moves in the positive direction? So, uh, the momentum of cart 1 is 1's mass, 1's velocity, and so if you multiply those two things together, you get 0.42 units on the mass are kilograms, units on the velocity are meters per second. Now, the, that velocity was in the positive direction, it said later, so that means this momentum, or this momentum is in the positive direction as well. Similar kind of thing for momentum two, that's going to be mass two, velocity two multiplied together, and when you go ahead and do that, you get 0.5185 uh, kilogram meters per second. Now, since that's moving in the other direction from the positive direction, of course, it's negative. The velocity is negative and the momentum is negative too. Now, it, it's pretty clear that that is larger than uh, the negative one is larger than the positive one. So that whenever you add the system together, add all the momenta together, we'll say the sum of the momentum is uh, the sum total of those two. It's, it's an addition problem, but since one's negative, it's really like a subtraction problem, and you're getting 0 0.0985 kilogram meters per second, and that is a negative. If you trace the significant figures through here, two significant figures there, two significant figures here, and both of those were significant to the hundredths place, so this answer is going to be significant to the hundredths place as well. Don't just look at it and make two significant figures because that's a mistake. Negative 0 0.01 kilogram meters per second for the system. On number 69, we have two soccer players. 
uh, one's mass and velocity are given, and the other one only their mass is given. Now they give the total momentum of the system of players, and they want to know what was the speed of the second player uh, based on everything else that they told us. So if I go ahead and uh, multiply the mass and the velocity of the first player together, I get a total momentum of 51.7 .7 kilogram meters per second in the positive direction to the right. I can't quite do that it for the other player because I don't know their velocity. So I'll do the next best thing. I'll say their momentum is their mass times velocity. And so I'll just get a nice expression. Anytime you can't get the number for something, do what you would have done with numbers and get an expression. And so that'll just be 38 times the velocity. Okay. Now they did tell me that the two of them together, the total momentum is uh, 2.2 kilogram meters per second. And they said that that is to the right. So there. So now the red momentum and the blue momentum expression are going to equal the total purple momentum. And so I should be able to very easily solve for that. So I'm going to make that 51.7 kilogram meters per second plus 38 times that velocity is equal to 2.2 kilogram meters per second. Let's subtract the 51.7 from both sides and get a 38 V is equal to a negative 49 point negative 49.5 kilogram meters per second. And then if I divide both sides, divide both sides by the 38, I'm going to get a negative 1.3 meters per second. So they are moving to the right a little faster than, than their friend at, because we, we could see that for the two of them to add up to just a little bit to the right, they have to, the blue player has to make up for their smaller mass with a little bigger velocity. On number 71, we have a ball that falls down, hits the floor, and bounces back up. Not quite to the same height, a little bit less, just like it would be in real life. Uh, part A says, what's the ball's momentum just before it hits the floor? Easy enough. All you have to do is say the initial momentum is the mass times the initial velocity. It's falling downward, so I'm going to say that that's the mass. Notice I've converted that to kilograms uh, times the velocity, which will be a negative 2.5 meters per second. If you do that, you end up getting an initial momentum of uh, negative 0 0.70 kilogram meters per second. We can do the same thing for the, for the momentum after. It says afterwards it bounces up with a speed of 2 meters per second, so same deal. Final momentum is the mass times the final velocity and so 0 0.280 again converted to kilograms times the uh, positive two this time it's going up and so that's going to be a 0.56 and this time that's a positive amount of momentum kilogram meter per second then for part c we're going to say what is the change? Now, sometimes people goof on this and they think the change is really subtle. They think it's just like uh, 0.14. But we're actually going all the way from 0.7, negative 0.7 to positive 0.56. Uh, just some people don't necessarily need to see it this way, but I think it's pretty clear whenever you look at it on a number line. Uh, your initial momentum was way over here at a negative 0.7. Your final momentum's not just a little bit away, 0.14 away. No, it's actually way over here at point positive 0.56. And so the change is all of this right here. That's a pretty big change. I can show you that mathematically. I can say the change 
is the final minus the initial. All of those are vectors. And so it's going to be the 0.56 minus a negative 0 0.70 kilogram meters per second. And when you go ahead and do that, you end up getting a value of a positive 1.12 kilogram meters per second.